All right, what's going on everybody? Today's Friday. We put two systems in today. And this one is an S9 furnace and for whatever reason, it ran an hour or so, heated the house and uh, now it's not heating the house. So we're gonna go in here and see why. So uh, I'll try to get some footage of it. All right, we got an S9 furnace here in the right discharge position. It's the new coil. Pump is buried. So let's see what we got. Okay. So it's flashing. E09, if you can see that. The light from the camera messes with it a little bit. Open inducer limit switch or condensate switch. So, Right off the bat, I see a couple of things that I always do different. And the guys did not do the way I always do it. Okay. So number one, that plug cap needs to come off and go down here where this one is. That seems kind of minor, but I am just one who believes water can slow down the vacuum being proved from there. And then this is that hose that it is important that it goes uphill before it goes downhill into this switch here. Um, it's okay to leave the purple one in the top of the collector. There's nothing wrong with that. It's in the bottom of the flow motor, so actually I think that's the only thing I see that I would change. I think I'd rather have this on the inside. So there's a little bit of water drop right there. Okay, so I'm going to shorten that just by a little bit. Put it in there a little different. All right. So, as you can see, that's the hose, and it comes out of there and goes up first. That way, if any condensation or water gets in it, it runs down and not into the pressure switch. All right, that is the only change I see that I need to make here. Everything else looks like it should. At least from what I see right here, right now. I guess I can just kind of check these and make sure it's back in there tight. So Okay, so we have determined that that little guy right there is opening quick and easy. Uh, there's no water in the flue pipe. It is definitely not excessively long and it has one 
long sweep L in it, that's it. And it is probably, I think, it's probably 22 to 24 feet long. 60,000 BTUs, two inch pipe, no problem. So, I am going to revert to my totally cool, stole the idea from Brad at Harbor Freight. Um, he and I both think the same thing about Harbor Freight, but he did notice these cool little cases and I saw him do a little review on a couple of them. And so I went out, bought myself a handful couple of them this size, a couple of them smaller for the manometer, or for this one for the manometer, uh, and a couple other things, and then a couple of that are a little smaller than this. And I've got my, uh, oh, let's see, what is it? I have my Micron, uh, my, my BlueVac Micron gauge in one, um, or at least one of them. And uh, I've got this in one. Uh, I've got another one this size that has uh, my spare dual manometer, um, one of the uh, field piece carbon monoxide CO testers, and uh, little various tools on the side. So I, I've found I really like them. You know, you pull the little square. All right, I got it fired up here, and yeah, these are my long hoses. I grabbed the wrong case. This is the one I normally use for uh, static pressure. But regardless, we can see we are a bit high. We're in uh, inches of water column right there. And over to the maximum, the book says on these S9s, the maximum in low is so we're going to get this down maybe a tad below the max it's 180 dead on right there we well, never get lucky and hit it dead on Politically correct, I should call that 1.80. Okay, so I'm going to drop this just a hair below that. Seems like it lists the minimum at 1.60 and the maximum at 1.80. So we've got it on 175. 1.75 I should say so it was definitely a bit high so I'm gonna wait the 10 minutes out for the board and as we all know by now W1 and W2 are jumped off on my furnace installs that's the way I like it I do not like a two-stage uh, I do not like a two-stage thermostat in heating it certainly makes sense to me in cooling, but just not in heating. So uh, this is going to run 10 minutes, and then it'll ramp up into high. And I'm going to suspect it's going to be high as well. So we will uh, we'll set that one, and then we'll hook our high limit back up. That guy. Right there, that, that's not the high limit on the furnace, but it is the inducer limit. And that's what was opening. The, uh, the E09 code tells you it's either the inducer limit or the condensate switch, which is that little pressure switch right there with the purple dot on it. That's, the, that's what they call the condensate switch. But nonetheless, uh, I'm gonna wait this out and uh, then we'll set the high pressure. And then what I always do is go back through them. I feel like the two regulators in the, because those are regulators, you tighten them down to get higher and loosen them. So I've always felt like that setting the high can affect the low. So I'll go back and double check them again. So I'll always set these twice. Um, 
I've seen that happen a lot on the modulating furnaces. But uh, nonetheless, we got a few minutes to wait. And then we'll look at high. All right, it just kicked up into high. And that is uh, definitely a little bit high as well. So the most we should see in high is 3.5 is your maximum. Drop the incoming down a good bit, but uh, that's okay. We still have our manifold pressure that we want, and that's what matters. And I forgot to show that sitting here idle without the furnace, it was just over 10 uh, on the incoming gas pressure, and uh, so that was down. Well, you saw what it was when we had it in low. Now it's in high. Got it down to 4.3, 4. 4.3, kind of fluctuating a little bit. But uh, as long as my manifold pressure stays where I want it, I'm not terribly concerned with the incoming pressure. Um, and this house has no other gas. I don't know if you can see. goes this comes straight from the meter makes 290s and goes right into the flex connector there and so no other appliances are going to affect this one that's for sure because there are none I'm just going to leave that right where it is have a problem with that so let's get our manometer off we'll shut this thing down and tighten these allens back and put the caps back on it and we should be good to go all right if you look up the value on these uh, inducer limits it's not much so it doesn't have to be far off to trip it and as you can see we've got it plugged back in now I mean it was hitting it so quick that uh, that I had to jump it out just to get it to run steady so I could set these pressures so let's hope that we're past that I'm gonna sit here and watch it go through low for 10 minutes and I'm gonna watch it kick up into high and hopefully see it burn a good 10 minutes there. If it does that without uh, without kicking that limit, I'm gonna put this cabinet on and get out of here and go get something to eat. It's getting late and it is Friday. I'm supposed to go to the basketball game tonight, but I'm not sure if I'll make it. I hate to go in there all dirty and everything, although this is dry under here, I can probably blow off with the nitrogen tank pretty good so we'll see 
hopefully we got this resolved. So one thing I noticed about construction in the 70s while we're waiting for this thing to go up into high gear is uh, look at this drop seal. And look at the floor joists. I don't know if you can tell, but this house is built from two by sixes. And even the drop seals are, they're doubled. Well, that one's actually tripled. So this is a triple drop seal here, but two by sixes. And the floor joist are two by sixes. Ain't that something else? Look how many, look at the nails they missed. They think those floor nails, look at that. Every one of them missed. All right, so we're in high here jacked up and burning so if it'll burn about 10 minutes like this I'll go ahead and leave it with these particular furnaces I have not yet seen the uh, inducer limit number one I haven't seen it being so sensitive but number two I haven't seen one of those in a 60,000 furnace. I've seen them in the hundreds and 120s, but I'm not. Yeah, I not seen that little guy in the smaller furnaces on these S9s, but there again, I'm just a heating and air guy. I'm no, no expert. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put the door on it and wait this thing out a little bit. And hopefully, we'll get out of here. All right, so that, uh, that thing's running good. Everything's okay with it. I have not seen one that bad off now. I believe that the installers should test gas pressures on every furnace they install. That's what they, the FSRs teach us in the classes and that's what the manufacturer says. Uh, but as you can see, it just don't always get done and sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. But now in that particular case, I will say I have not seen one that that bad off. Uh, that thing was jacked up pretty good, and uh, enough to hit the the limit in the uh, in the inducer. Like I said, I haven't noticed inducer limits on the smaller furnaces there. But regardless, it is what it is, and it was what it was, and we got it straightened out now up and running so I'm sure I'm not the only one that's done it but a quick horror story for a similar situation was uh, sitting there watching one burn and stuck the door back on it while it was burning and took off and left forgetting that my jumper wire was still on red and W and uh, about an hour later I had time enough to Stop and get a sandwich or two and get home and everything and got a phone call and you know it's almost 80 degrees in the house and the furnace won't cut off and it dawned on me right then bam like a light bulb in my head uh-oh left the jumper on it so nonetheless uh, I reached for the door tonight and said wait a minute I can't put this door on 
I watched it burn a good bit, made a couple phone calls. It probably burned 15 minutes and high, just to be sure. So I pulled my jumper off, put the door on, and uh, I'm headed out of here. Looks like I'll still make it to the basketball game. 6.36 right now, and they start actually at 7.30. Kind of hard to get a seat if you're not there by, you know, 6.30 to 7, really, in between the girls and the boys. I just like to see the varsity boys play. But my wife is there saying that they're kind of sitting wide to hold room to get me a seat. So I'm going to stop up here at the gas station and plug the uh, blowgun into the nitrogen tank and see if I can clean up a bit try to go ahead and make the basketball game. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope everybody had a better Friday than I did. But uh, we'll see you on the next one.